Um, what was your favorite episode of The Golden Girls? Oh, we did 180 of them, and it's kind of hard to come down to one. Uh, every time I answer that question, I, I find myself coming up with a different episode. <laughs> but I must say I love the one where Rose fell in love with this, this little person. A, he was a dwarf, of, you know, one of the little people. Right. And uh, they had a lovely romance, but he, he couldn't marry her because she wasn't Jewish. <laughs> Um, do you still keep in touch with the other ladies from Golden Girls? Oh, yes. Um, all the time. I, I talk to uh, Estelle on the phone from time to time, and Ruthie lives in New York, so I talk to her about every, oh, maybe five, six weeks. Uh -huh. And uh, Bea's been traveling around so much with her one-woman show, and uh, so, but we all keep in touch, and we see each other from time to time, you know, so we're you can't work that long together without being deep in your friends. Right. Um, during the last um, season of Golden Girls, what was the atmosphere on the set during the last episode? During the last episode? Yeah. Oh, it was... Uh, 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 excuse me, one second, Scott. Can you get the stack of ball in it? <coughs> Thank you, Donna. I'm sorry. Oh, no problem. Uh, it was a, uh, naturally very... Uh, Sentimental, let's face it. Yeah. Any last show is always sentimental, especially when you enjoyed being together. Right. And, uh, so we, there was a lot of hugging and kissing and crying. It wasn't quite as sloppy as the last Mary Tyler Moore show where we were all basking. <laughs> right. Um, do you have a favorite um, type of animal? Oh, anything with a leg on each corner, Scott. <laughs> I love them all so much. I, uh... I'm, I've been with the Morris Animal Foundation for 32 years. It's a health organization headquartered in Denver. We fund humane studies into specific health problems of dogs, cats, horses, and human wildlife. And then I've been with the Los Angeles Zoo for 33 years. And now I'm a vice president of the Zoo Commission. We finally got our own commission. And uh, so if I have to pick one of Let's rule out cats and dogs, but I think it would be orangutans, probably, hmm. um, gorillas, <laughs> giraffe. It's awfully hard to pick. Right, right. Uh, could you give me a few words to describe the following castmates? Be yeah, the following what? Is uh, describe the following castmates. Um, B. Arthur. Oh, B is a very strong, tremendously talented lady, and uh, she she just she can do almost everything. And uh, I, of course, I love her acting, but I especially like her singing. I love her. Singing. Uh, Rue McClanahan. Rue McClanahan is a butterfly. She, we had such fun. We we played games all the time. We'd have games going backstage, and we'd come out and play a scene, and then. We'd if we were waiting for an entrance or something, we'd go on with our game. Mary Tyler Moore. Oh, well, there's the class act of the Western world. She just, she was just wonderful. Mary could hold a scene together. Uh, she could she could keep the focus on a scene. If she only had, you know, if all she had to say was, won't you sit down? Somehow it was her scene. <laughs> she was, she's such a professional as well as a delightful lady. Um, Ed Asner. Oh, well, that curmudgeon. He's one of my best buddies. I see Ed more than I see anybody else. <laughs> and uh, we tease each other a lot. He's just as alike. Estelle Getty. Estelle is a darling. Estelle is, has, is not feeling as good as she could these days. She has uh, stopped um, signing pictures and stopped that kind of thing. She just doesn't feel up to snuff, but uh, she gave herself a birthday party, and I went to the birthday party, and she she enjoyed seeing everyone, but we have to come to a cell. Oh. Um, when you did Golden Palace, what do you feel was missing from that that was in The Golden Girls? The Arthur. The Arthur. I mean, it was like taking a leg off a table. 
the four of us were like four points on a compass. We all balanced each other, but you take one of those away, and B just didn't want to do it anymore. But you take one of those away, and we miss those base notes. Right. Um, do you have any aspirations to return to another sitcom? Well, I work all the time. I'm doing a running part on uh, that 70s show. And I would have no, if, if, it's, if it's a good one, sure. But you never know going in. I did uh, Ladies Man with Alfred Molina. We had a wonderful time together. But the show only lasted one season. And uh, so, sure, I'm, I just like to work. <laughs> got a movie coming out uh, March 7th with Steve Martin, which is fun. Oh, um, I you... like television better than film. Oh, oh why is that? Well, you, with television, you go in and you, you keep working all the time, and you go in, you do it, and you, then you leave. With film, it seems to take forever. Oh. And then you, you finish it, and then it's months before the product comes out, and by that time, you've forgotten what it was all about. <laughs> I'm not saying I... I, I wouldn't do it anymore. I mean, I like to do it and all that. And I had a great time with Steve. But I like television better. All right. Um, do you feel that Betty White is more like Sue Ann Nivens or Rose Nyland? <laughs> they used to ask my husband, Alan Lutton, uh, when I was doing the Mary Tyler Moore show, how close is Sue Ann Nivens, who was the neighborhood nymphomaniac, as well as the happy homemaker. And uh, how close is Betty to Sue Ann Evans? And he'd say, well, they're the, really the same person, except Betty can't cook. <laughs> and so as far as Rose and Sue Ann, I think they would be almost opposite sides of the coin. I've often played a little game in my head, wondering what would happen if they ever met each other. <laughs> but in a sense, Rose was so strong Everybody said she was dumb. She wasn't. She was just terminally naive, where Sue Ann was kind of terminally evil. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have any plans to revive either of those characters? No. No. Um, could you just give me a few words to describe Betty White, the actress? Betty White, the actress? Yeah. Uh, somebody who's so grateful for still being able to go to work all the time and... and I just enjoy it next to animals and my animal work. I enjoy it more than anything in the world. I also have to do it to afford my avocation. I have to work in show business to afford my animal work. <laughs> and, and now if you were to describe Betty White the person. Uh, well, Betty White the animal uh, person is, is more Betty White than, than anything really. I'm, Animals have been my passion all my life, and I just, I thoroughly enjoy them, and I'm not a, an animal activist, and I'm not into animal rights or anything like that, I'm, I'm just into animal health and well-being, and it's given me a wonderful other side of my life. Right. How many times can you, can you spend your life doing the two things you like the best, show business and animals? Right. Well, that's all the questions I have for you, and um, I thank you so much for doing this. I've been such a fan for years through... Oh, Scott, thank you very much. And um, I hope I didn't keep you from your dinner date. Or... Oh, not at all, and I hope my answers weren't too long. I go blithering on. Oh, no, this was this was great fun, and, um, you know, future success and all your um, future endeavors. Well, thank you so much, and keep watching. Uh, have a good evening. Thanks again. Bye. Bye-bye.